Well, really good to talk to you, Simon. And um, yeah, really looking forward to hearing your um, story, your life story, and also the um, the events which led to realization. And um, so that that would be great. Brilliant. Uh, so should we should we back up a little bit um, and uh, start from the sto story? It starts at the age of five. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was born in India. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was a civil engineer for a, a British company called Simon Carves Limited. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was there. Uh, you know, he he was uh, he was doing um, uh, I think to do with coal coal industry, and he was engineering uh, or putting plants up for the steel industry yes. in di various different locations. Yes. And and he thought that my education would be disrupted. And, and in, you know how it is in India, it was, it's always the importance is education, education, yes. education. There's nothing else. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so he uh, want, put me in a boarding school mm -hmm. at the age of five. But my mum's older sister she happened to be in Bangalore and she says no you're not putting that child in in a boarding school he's coming to live with us well, so that's a nice escape <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> it could have been worse uh, uh, anyway the, so I don't know if I was I was very happy to because it was a holiday from at at that time, it was a holiday for me to go to Bangalore yeah. and see 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 all, all the family, uh, and uh, I hadn't remembered much of them. I think this was probably the first time I'd seen them. I can't remember accurately. Uh, it, anyway, the I think the plan was they were visiting every summer holiday around April or May. Mm -hmm. uh, when I had a school break, they would come down from up north and visit Bangalore and stay for a period of time before they went back yeah. so the age of six I had by this time the the penny had dropped that I can't even remember that that I was missing my dad yes it, you know yes. all all the all the fun and games was all over uh, uh, and uh, and I remember uh, in the train station I don't know if if you do remember India they have this uh, station masters, they they are standing at the end of the platforms, and you're only allowed on the platform with a platform ticket. Yes. And without the platform ticket, no public is allowed to go on the platform apart from the people who are traveling with the tickets. Yeah. So I was in the train, and he was trying to coax me into getting off the train because the train was about to leave and in, you know in india that the doors are open you can jump in and off the train whilst it's moving mm. um and i think it's still the case <laughs> <laughs> uh it, it, anyway so i i was not having that and uh and i ended up i think biting him and scratching him in his face and everything else um so eventually he got me onto the platform and took me to the kiosk and bought me some sweets. So I don't know what he bought me, but he, and he took me outside the station, uh, outside the platform. And, and the station told the, the guy at the, uh, at the gates not to let me in. Mm -hmm. and, and he went back and ran into, into, into the train. And I'm trying to get back at him. I broke free and I'm, that anger had turned into rage. Hmm. I just shot past the station master that as if he wasn't there. Yeah. Uh, and I was in the train before he knew it. So, <laughs> so this ensued the finally, uh, and anyway, I'll come back to this, why this was important. Um, and finally, uh, he went away and the next year, my mum came, he didn't come. Uh, and the news was a week later, he was joining us. 
and he didn't. And the news was that he had died in a car in a jeep accident whilst at work. Uh, so I never saw him again. Wow. Uh, yeah. What sort of age were you, Simon? Uh, uh, I was six, maybe seven. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that that was the at the age of six was uh, what I remember about the train, uh, the the platform incident. After that, I never saw him mm. because he died. Um, anyway, and there was that that rage would you know that would uh, I had a great uncle, my mum's mm. sister's husband was the most most beautiful person mm. I ever met and he took me up as a son mm. and he used to care uh, you know when I, when the tantrums happened he used to take me to a bakery buy me some sweets and buns and with jam and you know I, he he was the best thing that happened um, yeah. and my aunt she took me on like her son mm. uh, uh, and that the next year because of the financial situation uh because there was no income coming in now uh, for the family. Mm. And um, we had to move to Mysore and uh, join a new school there. And, and the only way, and my, my maternal uncle, my mum's older brother, took us over. Mm. Uh, and that wasn't, that wasn't sweet. That was uh, kind of a really hard time. Uh, he was a very strict strictarian, and you know, before six o'clock in the evening, you have to be home, not playtime, just mm. uh, come home and study. And mm. as kids, I, I I was more into play things. I was I was least interested in studies. Mm. I was more into physical things and plays and games and whatever else. Um, and then uh, the age of fourteen or thirteen or something, I took up cycling i i like cycling. Uh, you know I, that was the biggest thing the push bike mm. to have was like having a maybe a 2000 cc a fancy motorbike i <laughs> 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 you know, that was you know that that was the end thing to do so so i got that i got into cycling and i started practicing cycling um so i used to hide the bike in french houses so he wouldn't see me go out to do the practice Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it was so. I suppose him being obst obstructive to that was what drove me a bit more. Be and that that rage was what was kept me going because there was there was no there was no going back kind of a thing. Hmm. Uh, hmm. And uh, anyway, so we three of us, and then I became the state champion. Then I became then I. Got to the nationals. I got to the bronze position. I was almost represented India, uh, all with a with an old rally bike, which was wow. <laughs> <laughs> altered with some new wheels on. Uh, yeah, and then so, your your bike played quite an important part in your escape route, didn't it as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. So how the story develops from there is fascinating. That then uh, we jumped on the uh, on the bikes. We had all the because we couldn't buy any carriers or or, or bags or mm. anything like that from, because there was no imported stuff. Yeah. So we looked up on the magazines and looked at the pictures and had them stitched using the local materials what was available. And it was all made of heavy steel <laughs> and stuff. <like> <laughs> And we couldn't, for the life of us, we couldn't find these um, hooks with the elasticated bands. You know the ones, so that oh you, yes, <laughs> yeah, you put them on uh, on the bike so that the 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 bags don't fall off yes. off the hooks. Yeah. And we didn't have that. <laughs> <laughs> and we arrived in Greece, and the bags was falling off the bike, <laughs> <laughs> and people are shouting, "Oh, they look." And finally, we met someone, and um, he took us in. All strangers, it, it, we we had jumped with in, into the abyss with no yeah. language, no one didn't know anyone. Wow! But it worked out. All worked out for you. 
Yeah, oh, well, that's so. Anyway, so so coming coming to the present day, uh, uh and business and that took over and family and uh, four daughters and uh, the nineties the the collapse and having the house. Where the, you couldn't sell it because it was less, and so you owed more to the banks. Then the so property, that, yeah. yeah, the property collapsed, complete collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, luckily, completely out of line job came up, mm -hmm. uh, and I was. This was the character because anything new uh, that wasn't heard of in the industry, I would jump. Yes, yeah, let's go. W what was the options? Working at Asda's or. Or, or McDonald's, or you know, yeah, anything like that, and that 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 came about, and that job was, I, I went for it, um, and luckily that helped me pay towards the, the mortgage. Those those nine years were really really rough. Yes, I yeah, remember because, those years. Yeah, oh, it was uh, it was it was hell because uh, the mortgage alone was thirteen hundred pounds a month, and that. You know, you have the family as well on top of that, and uh, it it was a uh, it was yeah, quite a struggle, but I think it was essential. Mm. Mm. But then, um, then, but to relieve from that pressure, the drinking had started. Uh, mm. You know, uh, and that lo uh, and always looking for that weekend to go out and and mm. to have a drink and mixed with friends and and, and the, the main objective became money because without that you you were nothing yeah. that was the that was what was sold yes yeah yeah so and when did the spiritual seeking start then simon the, very late actually because until then i didn't even know what spiritual meant or i i, I wasn't one of them kind of artistic guys who had a, a spiritual awakening or, or anything mm. like that mm. you know I, I was very straight and <laughs> yeah, yeah, looking after your family. yeah th this is it just work hard mm. uh and and get to where you need to get to because that was the always the driving yeah. yeah uh so few things went wrong from 2012 really big 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 things uh and and one day i was just sitting there and i said i don't know what i want really because i don't have a passion for the passion arises one minute i want to be a cyclist one minute i want to be a business one minute something else something else some no I'm, i don't know what i want mm. i really don't know what i want and everyone was saying oh you got to go and do uh no i was checking on youtube and this programs about um, ayahuasca uh, uh, things mm. came about and then so I thought mm, okay so I took myself to Costa Rica for <laughs> seven days I had a four day uh, four night back to back ceremonies of ayahuasca in Costa Rica it was a beautiful setting mm. and that was the turning point uh, I came back and the drinking was gone it's just bang, it was gone. Uh, mm. and I couldn't I couldn't play it. How how did that go? Because it wasn't that I was trying to give it up or anything. No. The desire was yeah. Yeah. Uh but following that, I couldn't talk to anyone because because the receptors with the with the drink was you needed the drink to talk to people. Yeah. To socialize. Uh, even though I wasn't a drunk, drunk person, I would never go near alcohol in the morning. So it, it was only in the nighttime when everything was finished yeah. that I would... I it was would, a social I would, life, really. Yeah, social or, or by myself as well, or to get on the phone and be social. Yeah. Uh, 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 and you could talk for hours with that. Hmm. But without that, that's, that was the main part that was missing. Without the drink, the conversation ended. There was nothing to say, uh, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so then I came back and still nothing. Uh, and you know, 
I didn't find my passion. What was, what is my, what is, but I'd asked that question without me knowing about it. What is it I want? Who who am I really? I'm not this. Yes. Uh, that passion comes and goes. So what is it? What do I want? Mm. And it, w really, I was asking that who am I question. Yes. Without knowing about without it. Without even realising, yeah. Without, without even realising anything about it. Mm. Uh, I had come to that point. Mm. Um, and, um, and then so I found some centres here. Mm. I went, went on a mad... I was... Now I'd replace the drink with the experiences of the the ayahuasca and uh, mm. mushroom ceremonies and mm. uh, and then I did iboga ceremony. That's a knockout for thirty two hours. <laughs> 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 uh, and there's still nothing. Still back to that that searching and mm. you know, and then I did. Uh, something called a 5-MeO DMT. It's not the normal DMT. It's an extract from a, a frog uh, called the Bufo avarius. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my God. That, that, when, when I did that, it was absolute pain because up to now, I developed a resistance to, you know, I, I, I could experience all of that without having any side effects. Yes. But this this just blew me out of water. I didn't know what happened. I mm. was screaming and shouting. I couldn't see. All I saw was a pattern, a geometric pattern of light with different mm. colors. Mm. Uh, uh, and couldn't get past that. And it's like, um, like a sensation. It would twist and turn uh, uh, to the point of breaking in your head. It's like someone is turning you like that from inside. Uh, uh, and it, it was unbearable my pain mm. not physical but mm. that not knowing where you are uh, yes. is just absolute mayhem it was not fear it was terror mm. Mm. absolute terror um, I did about five sessions of those over a period of time <laughs> <laughs> so see, again this 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 character was known for punishment. You would mm -hmm. take and you would go back again. Yeah. Okay, this time. Okay, next time. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, the penny sank mm -hmm. after the last one. Um, it was so annihilating mm -hmm. that you, I couldn't. I couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. So all of those, all of that came to a standstill. Mm -hmm. So then I thought, okay, well, then now what? So let's do some meditation. So <laughs> then I came across Muji and, and slowly non-duality and then reading and understanding that. In just all on YouTube, really. Yeah. All on YouTube. Um, obviously, I think that the ayahuasca just gave me a kick, to, you know, in the mm. right, right direction to show me that there was more Yes. And just this body just mm. dying and you're gone. And uh, mm. and he said, as as you know, it's a heavy ride, <laughs> if, you know, and you're grasping for even more things. Yeah. Uh, well, pain was quite a theme for you, Simon, wasn't it? Because yeah, losing your dad at such an early age, and then even cycling. You know, to be a successful cyclist, there has to be a high pain threshold, really. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, now you pointed that out. Yes, it does make sense. So yeah, so that was in the earlier part, and then yeah, so so you started to do meditation, and so you meditations. Came... Then uh, that this journey started about two thousand eighteen when I went for the first yeah. uh, cross breaker, yes. and after that, to now has been uh, I sold the business mm -hmm. that that had to happen uh, because and the lockdown came mm -hmm. and I'd sold the business. So now all of a sudden I'm by myself. Yeah. I've got one business and that doesn't need my presence all the time because it, it, it's, um, it's a laundrette so that people put money in. But I've got to be here upstairs so that 
I can see the CCTV if there's any kids hanging around or doing some naughty things, I can go and, or someone wants to give a service wash or something. So I stay upstairs here. Yeah. Uh, and that was a pinning down session that yes. you I couldn't leave. And then all interests started dropping. Interest in anything wow. just just dropped. Uh, wasn't interested, wasn't excited about anything. Didn't want to go on holiday. Don't want, there's nothing to look forward to. It's just like almost. Mm. And and then uh, a sequence of deaths, like just surrounding me, death after death after someone in the shop local died or some friend had died or I go out of the house, there's a funeral car in front of me mm. uh, and just look, just death. And I couldn't work out what is this death about? You know, I can't shake it off. And it's so in your face. Mm. And then I, I, I really used to like Rumi in his, mm -hmm. and his, in his poems. And uh, uh, at some point, uh, finally, I was coming to the end of this searching. I was forcing myself not to, not to meditate now because as a, you're just going for another ex experience. Yes. And, and when the meditation is over, back to square one again, mm -hmm. uh, st still searching. And when you're doing the meditation, and yes, there is no bow body or you can't see the difference between you and the sofa or you, uh, the outside is inside kind of a thing. But when the meditation is over, you're back, back again, back to normal again, back, back in the grind. Uh, yeah. Nothing's happening. And well, so I turned off and someone said, if you're not doing it, you're also doing it by not doing it. So I said, what to do now? <laughs> <laughs> Where do you go from there? <laughs> then, um, so I was watching some turned on the Netflix, watched some, some Hindi movie or something like that, just for a laugh, mm -hmm. to get away from everything. And there there was this spoof, some detective kind of a movie. I was shot in another country. Uh, and this guy gets a, a book and he's got all these uh, letters of words, so the first words and first letters of all these words marked up. And the book was Rumi. And I thought, God, blimey. <laughs> What's the program here? How is that Rumi is appearing here? And and then there was another movie I watched. And the song, there was a song. And it says, you're dead little by little. And I'm thinking, you're dying little by little. That, that was another message. I, I Like that, synchronicities. Like, you couldn't escape it. Mm. Uh, you know, watch something else or something else it would still be some little message coming up there um so eventually um then i looked into angelo uh because angelo cuts out a lot he does a lot of practical stuff of just listening to the sound and mm. uh, and uh, and those kind of things are very very helpful yes. and he takes takes the shine off the you know the, the spiritual side of things and you just do that as an exercise yes uh and you're right and quite rightly saying so when you uh angela always said that don't you know the sound is your master the hmm. the hit uh, the, the the seeing is you it tells you everything that you need to know it's hmm. you know there is no i'm not i'm just pointing in that direction for you to see it yourself yes so it's beautiful like like that and and also you said that you know once you start putting someone up on a pedestal you're giving your power away yes. uh, yeah definitely and then then uh i was just scanning some youtube channel and what what I, oh going back a little bit two years ago i'd watched that uh conscious tv interview with you oh yes yeah but nothing clicked then mm. uh, mm. Because I think I was more interested in the mystical, magical side of things. Right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 
and and coming back to it after the the five meo dmt uh the nightly attack started uh beings just can't sleep being attacked left right and center and i mean i would lie up side stick after side stick and just to clear out but nothing would help um what and again this again i was in the uh in savers in town mm -hmm. and i was buying some stuff for the laundry uh, and there happened to be this really old guy and um, I just picked up his basket because he was really struggling mm -hmm. and put it on the counter. That's all I did. Mm -hmm. uh, and he waited for me by the door and mm -hmm. uh, and he said, uh, we chatted, but he waited for me. So I went there and he chat. He told me he was a Jigu, Jigu Krishnamurti fan and he watched all Jigu Krishnamurti's uh, things. I thought, wow, what amazing. Yes. What yes. in say was in the middle of nowhere. I just happened yes. to pick up a basket and there there it was and, and his message was you know what Jigga Krishnamurti used to say it's just be that's all he said just be <laughs> <laughs> that's it, it. right so that was reverberating in me hmm. when, when one of these nightly attacks happened the first thing that came to mind was just be so hmm. I just hmm. didn't do anything didn't tighten up, didn't, yes. didn't no, no reaction, reaction. no yeah. reaction. And it just screamed in my ears and it left. Mm -hmm. And ever since then, everything started. Even very occasionally I have one, but mm -hmm. it doesn't last because, mm -hmm. uh, but for two years of nonstop help, that was mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then I watched your program and, um, it was, I think it was some guy from Holland, Andy or something like that. He, he was doing an interview with you. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's when the spark started. I was pinned to the chair. This was even before there, there was energy. I could feel the, the buzzing in my ears, mm -hmm. really loud. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and then when I watched that, then, then the realization I had, you know, personalized, the very first point that you did was you made it my awareness to be my awareness. It mm. was, you know, it was Simon who was aware. And mm. yes, of course, I look at my, there's Simon's hands and legs. <laughs> what was there about that? <laughs> <laughs> and then the other point I was, uh, was uh, the soft awareness where, you know, effortlessly you were observing everything, all the shapes. Uh, 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 and again, when when people, Adi Ashanti was saying like, as if you hear the rain that is uh, hitting the windows with that softly listening. Mm -hmm. But yours was really crystal clear explanation as to, and, and especially you take, then you say, involve the mind, and now you go into, you know, explaining it. Mm -hmm. in a, but that when you do that when you do the exercise then you know in, instantly that this that's how you rest as awareness yeah, the distinction yeah that it's already yeah. now one the me had captured the awareness to be mine I'm think trying to rest as awareness where will you rest mm -hmm. you can't so you're coming your, your approach was you're coming from the top to the bottom Yes. And that, I mean, you know, for may, many people may not work that way, but mm. for some people, you know, it's, it's all time and in a way. Yes. Time. But as we know, there is, uh, I'm yet to experience that. Uh, but again, see, that's the doubt that's just crept in there and we're going to reject it back. You <laughs> spotted that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so we, if you're already that yeah, yeah that's the key isn't it when yeah when you just see that we've always always just been in our true nature and um, yeah yeah but that the way you describe it you know the the way our 
infinite impersonal nature it seems to be obscured by the personal yeah absolutely and then you realize that what you thought was the personal all along has been the impersonal being yeah and uh and i remember uh, writing an email with, uh, i don't think i went into much detail i just rambled something and i, mm -hmm. I sent it to you just to see if you get a response from you really <laughs> 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 so uh it was uh, been over quite a short period of time though simon hasn't it Be, you, yeah it was only about two two and a half weeks ago fantastic yeah that's uh, uh and then uh what happened yeah the the very the uh, once that re it was just a, it was just that split second mm -hmm. i'd seen it and the laughter followed. I almost fell off the chair. And I thought, I've been having myself. <laughs> <laughs> With this simplest of simple things, I couldn't see it. I mean, <laughs> how could you? I mean, that, that's, that's, that, I couldn't stop laughing for, for ages. And the next day when I woke up, there were no thoughts at all. Hmm. Uh, and I was, you know, you always wake up with a heavy headedness and, oh, what have you got to do today? And, you know, you, you take about five cups of coffee before you set that up. <laughs> Stand around scratching. <laughs> uh, so that, that happened. Uh, and after that, thoughts would try to come up and they'll be like, you know, like little, uh, if you had draft beer, you know, the bubbles raising up to the surface from the bottom yes. of the glass and they go, and they come up and they go ping, the uh, thoughts would come up and they will just ping off. <laughs> uh, I, I thought it was really hilarious to see that. I, and then after that, lost meaning all, to any words. What does that mean? Mm. What does that word mean really? I don't know, kind of a thing. You know, uh, and that happened. And then I came and sat down on the sofa and then and kind of a shaking started. Then I look, looked at the hands, even now. I, and and there's a understanding that these are not your hands. Mm -hmm. This this is not. No. And, and I like, I went like that. And I was like, how's that happening? <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> I walked myself to the kitchen or something walked there and made myself coffee and came back and but it was uh, very very sluggish at that point because you want to make coffee was an effort mm. uh, I, and the, the body felt so heavy yes uh, the, I think a two three days I just had to lie down I couldn't I couldn't move yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, it was so heavy, mm. um, but completely awake, just images flashing, mm. um, uh, like like little pictures and pictures of me when I was younger, and some pictures that I don't even remember. Uh, I don't know what the relevance was. I'm sure it will happen. You know, some point. It's a great story, though, Simon. It's very <laughs> dramatic, really, isn't it? You know, from your, <laughs> your childhood, and then, and but the it's been very fearless, hasn't it? You know, you all the experiences you've had, and then the ayahuasca, and yeah, yeah, it's been, uh, and, and, but it's really accelerated recently. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Because at some points, I thought, you know, the, these. There are people waking up at the age of 19, 20, 23, all young. And if you listen to all the YouTube stories, something, they were always like spiritually inclined and uh, uh, and they had some kind of experiences in, in, in the past to... Uh, but not, not, no, no, that was the case here. No, it's great. It's a fantastic Complete materialist.
and even uh, and, and the, uh, the one other thing is wanting to tell others mm -hmm. yeah i know i know that it doesn't work they can't understand it yeah it's it's not you cannot engage your mind to understand it, it, you got to grok it you got to drink it before you call it coffee or tea otherwise no explanation is going to be enough mm -hmm. to explain it and it's it, as you, as you say it's a pointer right mm -hmm. It's good you've recognised that because I'm sure people will... I still keep doing it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. I remember you the story you'd said about when you'd done all the... Uh, printed all the CDs and sent it off to everyone and no one responded. And I, I know, but why am I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> and then... Um, want to phone India up and uh, uh, no, that's a different ball game because because they 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 all know spirituality yes uh, and because of the upbringing and and you know uh, and you're not you know you you don't know what you're doing that's not in the tradition you you need to find a guru and that that's the that's the like, like but mm. I'm almost like saying what do you really need to know at this moment and what kind of knowledge do you need to have to know that you exist yeah <laughs> 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 so you haven't made any calls to india yet <laughs> i i had um, made my, uh, calls to to my mum but bless her she's 80 hmm. but uh not in a very good health, but I, I want to see her this year, hopefully. Good. But what a gift to take back to to see her. Uh, you know, in Indian tradition, that is the ultimate goal. Is moksha, isn't it? Absolutely, yeah. Li liberation. Yeah. Mm. But, it's, but, but, you know, people can devote their whole life or many lifetimes yeah seeking it but you you know it's just been presented to you in a way which is amazing yeah but the seeking yeah the, you can't really define it can you but it's um yours is a very unique sequence of events really but it's yeah. very you know very dramatic as well <laughs> <laughs> and uh now there's still uh, packages being received. I think back going back in 2019, uh, I had a car parking fight. I parked somewhere in South End, and hmm. I was hundred pound. I thought well, I'm not gonna play hundred pound for that stupid, you know, private car park. So I thought I'd go to court. I'd missed it, and I'd got a CCJ. I did. I had paid it when he went to court. Hmm. I couldn't be bothered to go to court. But I'd missed it. I mean, uh, um, I'd missed the deadline. Mm. So I think in 2022 or something, when I went to apply for a loan or something like that, uh, they said, you got a CCJ. I said, what? <laughs> but day before was, uh, I'd applied, because it was paid, was satisfied. Mm. Uh, I made an application to be set aside mm. because it just, causes hindrance uh you know to, but in the back of my mind I, I knew this this was not going to happen mm -hmm. it's um and i thought when i when i finished speaking to the the, the judge on video conference he said that you were late there's no two ways about it but therefore I can't, I'm not in a power to set aside the judgment, even though you have paid. This mm. is satisfied, but I can't set aside. So uh, there was a moment of something, a, a triggering of emotion, mm. but I caught it and I thought, aha, this mm. is the invite back into the game. Mm. So if there's no one here, which way it goes, why are you bothered? It's all game. So that's how it's meant to be. Let it be. Hmm. So that was one of the lessons. And uh, I, I, not necessarily everything has to go. Most people get things going their way. Hmm. 
but mine was the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> but it's hey, that's all good. That's only the script. <laughs> yeah, wonderful, Simon. And um, so your family's grown up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Uh, my second daughter, she's she does. Um, she watched some YouTube and the first night she did some astral projecting or something like that. And right. and she was bang, just like that. And she did it. Uh, I said, and, you know, and she said, yeah, it was, looked like in the 70s that uh, people walking around the clothes and everything else. Right. Uh, and I said, don't waste it. This, this is your opportunity. Uh, but, you know, you can't, you can't you can't force no. a push or no. tell anyone they, they, they got to do their own journey mm. uh i think the more i talk about this uh, you know i think i'm pushing it away instead of yeah it's good to recognize that really isn't it because yeah. it's being, just being easy and you know just living your own truth is the most uh, valid. yeah and then they'll they'll recognize that mm. and also the me meditation is almost like a uh, lost interest in that and, and and i can sit there and eyes wide open and watch one one of yours as, as i said to you earlier i will keep watching the nina hakamis that the, the three-part series yes. and there is still little drops and and still now i get the 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 energy uh mm. coming through mm. especially with that in, with those three interviews so thank you nina uh for sharing uh that was incredible uh, it's great the yeah. way things are happening though because you know lots of people are realizing their true nature now just from watching the videos and i, I yeah. feel really inspired about that it's so it's so good that m many more people now um are realizing in that way rather than in conversations so it's uh it, it's happening you know there are lots and lots of people yeah i remember you saying that you were you you studied jyotish in, in india mm, yeah yes um this this what one of the the driving problems was for me at a young age was you know we all, all the family did visit temples and were born in a, a brahmin family so mm. it, it was always shoes off everything you can't go inside walk in the kitchen when they're cooking and all sorts of things all uh, you know uh when my dad had died i questioned it because everything was done according to this yes, you know all, yeah uh, and no one knew what happened mm. why it happened to my mom like that mm. or or to us mm. So in a way, you pushed me away in in, in an opposite direction. Yes. Which is, I, yeah, it, which is that, led, that led to your liberation, really. Yeah, yeah. It way was really, you know, and also uh, the fact was you, you pushed away, and also because I got pushed away, I didn't get traditionally too in what. Once you get that traditional input. The cultural input is very hard to break break out of that. Yes. Yeah. Once you can start going into temples and you're praying, and now that divide had happened, that that break was hap had happened because you know I didn't trust it because mm. they did everything and look what happened. Mm. Yeah. So you you all just take money and do this um, all these pujas and whatever else you're doing for. Just to make money, and uh, none of none of you are a, any truth to anything, mm. uh, and that that there was that divide, and and therefore my involvement towards going in towards the Hinduism and and going too deep into it, mm. uh, I think was 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 pushed away. So mm. it works in amazing ways. When we look back on things, and that, I just realized that when I'm talking to you just now. It's been effortless, really, hasn't it? You know, in the way the sequence unfolded for you. Yeah, 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 beautiful. Mm. Uh, 
still do those just uh, you know if the mind is clarity and, and wants to jump back in I just put a video on uh, uh, and the energy is coming instant calming down and the, the front part of it all feels like silky smooth uh, that's the only way I can explain it yeah, and they call it stillness or you can call it something else yeah. it, it feels really silky smooth and and outside there might be noises here and there, and, but that that is steady. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, Simon, and we were just going to have a little chat, weren't we? We weren't going to record anything, but it, I just like the way you started to describe things, and so. Yeah. You know, we've done it. We've done tonight. a good job. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> All the best to you. That's been fantastic. Thanks so much, Simon. Thank you.